Hello everybody and welcome to the Overwatch League. We have got some fantastic matches ahead of us today. My name is Brandon Hook and I'm of course going to be joined by, as per usual, Joshua Wilkinson. Tried to get rid of him. No luck there. The higher ups just won't hear me out, unfortunately. But Josh, how are you today? I know we've been talking for the past three hours in rehearsals, but I want to know, you know, personally now and the people want to know how you're doing. The people want to know, do they? Yeah, I'm doing all right, actually. I'm excited for the games that we've got coming up. I've been enjoying watching the Overwatch League over the past couple of days as yeah. the teams have been experimenting with the new hero and the new meta and this kind of stuff. And I really want to see kind of what plays out today because I've been privy to the starting lineups and there's some weird stuff going on for a bunch of these teams. So that just intrigues me even more. My curiosity is building to previously unseen levels. Yeah, we've been seeing some weird stuff because, of course, Echo has been played for the first time in Overwatch League history, and we've been seeing yeah. it uh, across the board. Good teams, bad teams, doesn't matter who's playing it. She's seeing playtime right now, and, uh, you know, I've seen some, some questionable decision-making with Echo. I've seen some oh, yeah. questionable plays with Echo, but uh, I, I, there's no denying that she has added this new, unique, uh, just spillage of chaos into the game. <laughs> And it has made oh, yeah. it so entertaining Absolutely. to watch. I was I, I was actually really bummed out because I was trying to watch. I wanted to watch the Asian games last night, but unfortunately I had to be in bed early to, uh, well, fortunately, unfortunately. It depends on how you look at it. <laughs> but I, I had to be up to look uh, or to cast these games today. Uh, but as you can see from the statistics here, Echo is, you know, by quite a large country mile leading right now. Well, not large country mile. The next highest is, is just below with Brigitte, but... All, all miles are the same distance, actually, Bren. So it's a completely country pointless mile, uh, phrase mile, anyway, isn't is it? Is it? Yeah. I feel like a country yeah. mile... I feel like people in the in the boonies, in the rural areas, forgive me if I'm wrong, would think of a mile differently. Uh, possibly, because there's more weaving in and out. I think that's where the phrase comes from. But yeah. anyway, yeah, we've had Echo. She's weaving in and out of the air. Uh, and a lot of the teams have been running her despite the fact that they haven't been doing so well and a lot of the teams have been running her because they're doing incredibly yeah. so i don't know whether a lot of the success that teams are having could be pinned down to echo but one thing is for sure a lot of teams have decided to run her for better or for worse and she does introduce that chaotic element of course a casual reminder as well uh, about the tournament structure that we're running in may um that's going to be kicking off uh, but for starters the philly team as you can see there's a couple of names missing from here most notably Chipsa, not playing on the Philly lineup once more. Very unfortunate just unlucky, again, really, Brent. isn't it? Just properly, it uh, really just is. actually unlucky. Cannot believe Very how unlucky. unlucky this guy is. Still not seeing play time. Um, unpredictable, really. When when he got signed, I, I was sure that we were going to be seeing him. But alas, not today. Um, but this is an interesting team that the Philly Philadelphia Fusion have been sort of just going to be yeah. running out the gates here. Yeah, this is a weird one. No Carpe to start with. And that's strange because we have seen uh, Tracer have a lot of gameplay. Yeah, there's no McCree or Widowmaker this week because of Hero Pause. But I thought we might see him be fielded on the Tracer. This indicates to me that they're going to be running more what the Asian teams are running with the Echo and the Sombra, with Hisu uh, playing that Sombra. Yeah. And Fury in as well seems to indicate that they're going to run double shield. But that might be wrong as well. We know that Fury can play a very capable deep. Yep, it's very interesting indeed. On the other side of things, of course, uh, Philadelphia Fusion going to be playing against the Pirates Eternal, and as you can see from this lineup, uh, when I looked at this, uh, I'm shocked because I see four Frenchmen, you know, and, and it's just rare that you just see that be the case. It's, it's rare to it, just. Is see. it rare? Yeah. I mean, that has happened a lot with the Pirates Eternal. Has, it, it has. Ever it since Exe has been has had to go home as well, soon is now a must pick for. That's him. true. I, I don't know what I was trying to set you up for. Maybe some joke about the French. You know, us English, we like to take. I'm not going to make a joke about the French. Not going to make a joke about them because I have full respect for the French. Actually. I tell you what, though. I tell you who isn't French, though, okay, Brent. Tell me. Fielder. Oh, and that's that, true. That's, actually, yeah, he's he's, he's that, in. that guy. Hanging out there is a brand new pickup for the Paris Eternal. He is a flex support player that comes in probably to replace Heap. Uh, they do still have Grey on the roster, but running fielder today. Yeah. Uh, and he is a former flex support for GC Busan Wave, the same team that Edison used to play for. He's well respected, if not well known, uh, within the Korean contenders scene. Yeah. And I think that he'll be a good pickup for them. You've got to remember who the coaching staff is here for the Paris Eternal. They're very good at scouting. Yes. So I have faith in this guy. If the coaches have faith in him, I've got faith in him. I think that we're going to see a strong performance, uh, you know, over time. Maybe not right at the beginning as they work out the language barrier and well, work out, you know, the, just the team coordination. But look, I think it'll be A little good. bit of trivia about Field. Uh, you know where he got his name from? <laughs> his, You're just going to lie to me His love anyway. of baseball. 
Yeah. Really? Yep. It's true. Yeah. Actually, that might be true. Baseball is very, very popular, popular in South Korea. Korea, but I did just make that up. You're correct. Now, let's take a look at the map set. <laughs> and of course, the first map we're going to see here is Oasis. Um, we had a discussion earlier about whether the people of Oasis would speak French. Um, I doubt it. Heavily doubt I it. I mean, why not? It's the future. People are multilingual these days. Um, yeah. I say these days. I mean, Overwatch is set in the future. You know, it, it, isn't it Overwatch is. supposed to be uh, like uh, almost a look into a perfect world in the future? You know, I don't think it's a look into a perfect world. No, because there's a lot of problems with how they interact with the Omnics. Have you seen King's Row? That doesn't look like a utopia okay, but, to me. But it's, it's getting dystopian. There. It's like it's it's if we were working through the problems. You know, mm, working through okay. the, through All the right. Kings. Anyway, there's still a lot of there's <laughs> a lot of conflict in this world as well. Let's. let's I, I, I was about to say, let's get into the game, but no, we're not going to get into the game because they're pausing already. Who knows what the reasoning mm. is? Josh, I hear you've been getting some inside information. Why do you, why, what is, what's going on with the pause? Okay, I've actually had no inside information. Again, Bren, you're just lying to the people there. But I do think that this is a fairly good opportunity to just have a think about the past times that these teams have come up against each True. other. Yeah. Uh, because when these teams first clashed, it was a very close game, 3-2, and the Philadelphia Fusion, they squeak away with the win. Second time these teams clash, another really close 3-2 game. But since then, since that last occurrence, the teams have kind of gone in opposite directions. The Philadelphia Fusion absolutely slaughtered recently uh, with a 3-0 win over the Atlanta Reign, a team that we consider to be pretty good, a team that's yeah. previously taken them to five. And the Paris Eternal got 3 0 by the Florida Mayhem recently. So yeah, it's gonna be very different team compositions this week, it's, it's all brand new, and feeling very fresh with Echo in the mix. But uh, whereas we would have expected this to be a clash between two really top teams, Philly have only continued to get better and better and better. And Paris are now looking a little shaky after that recent loss to Florida. So this is time for Paris to bounce back. They definitely are looking a little bit shaky. And as you said, Josh, it's the time for them to bounce back to prove that they can still compete. But Philadelphia Fusion going to be going out with the Echo composition. Paris going for something a little bit different here, running the Ash and the Tracer, just trying to pump in a bit of long range damage, see if they can clean up a couple of kills with Nico. Interesting that it's not soon playing the Tracer, a role that he would be known for. Instead, Nico going to be playing that role. And a double shield comp for, to boot now for Paris. You can see both teams just contesting up onto the high ground here, searching for opportunities, and they find the first pick. That's Fielder. Quick little burst shot there, finds Alarm, but Ivy dives into the background. He's going to take out soon here. Immortality Field now going to be committed the one side but uh, Ivy look at that with the try shot already just gonna start lasering them down if you don't know a bit of an execute mechanic on that one he is absolutely demolishing right now with these sticky bombs and it's gonna be a clean fight win right now for Philadelphia Fusion and I gotta say a lot of teams have come up with different ways to kind of mitigate the echo when they're not running against it Paris's method of running the ash they don't seem to think it's worked they're making a switch it is a very effective composition. I like the Ash Tracer, generally like speaking. Though. It's weird, though, that it puts Nico over to the Tracer, and the Torb is also a good counter. Nico versus Hisu is the strangest Tracer 1v1 battle that you can think of when thinking about Philly versus Paris. This isn't Carpe Soon, it's Nico Hisu. Yeah, it's so odd, isn't it? But when Ivy is just demolishing like this, I mean, the Sticky Bombs are doing so much damage to him, and he's got the duplicate ready and waiting. Might not even need it, though. The amount of damage he's just pumping into them. Fury as well, diving into the back line, finds two kills, and his team demolishing right now. Paris Eternal just cannot find an entry onto this point, uh, and it's difficult when Philly are just pumping in the damage. Now, I don't want to come out and make claims like, you know, Echo might be overtuned. Again, I don't want to come out making those claims, <laughs> but she does do a lot of damage. She is very powerful. I think that Ash Tracer comp would have been fantastic if they won the first fight, because then the Ash can position on the high ground. But as it is, pushing into the Echo here, where she always starts on the high ground, your backline is going to get continually harassed as you push in. And Ivy's just got the free space to do whatever he wants. Nano onto the Winston, though. Sado wants to lead it in. I'm going to see the duplicate onto the Brigitte. Seeing if he can build up the rally super fast. Already onto 80% of his old timing. Fury sends in the bomb. The rally comes up. That's perfect timing. Ivy. Utilizing the Echo perfectly there. It's exactly what you want to be trying to do. Because remember, even when he fades back into the Echo, as you see here, the Rally Armor persists. So they can win out this team well, fight. 
It only persists for a little while, though, and Philly actually used both of their rallies. And I don't know whether you know this, Brand, but rally stack. armor doesn't stack. doesn't stack. It's one of the weird interactions in the game that doesn't stack. So I think that was a bit of a misplay by Philly, but it doesn't really matter. 95% and their sheer aggression is pommeling the Paris Eternal right yep. now. 99, no one near the point, and Philly make that one look very easy. So yeah, I mean, you, what you've pointed out just there is one of the uh, things that the teams are going to have to get used to. Uh, and it's almost yeah. like we've reverted back to, it feels like almost 2017, very early 2018 Overwatch, you know what I mean? Where teams were making mistakes like overlapping support ultimates like they weren't really supposed to be doing. You're going to start to see that quite a bit now because Echo does just add that chaos into the mix. Oh yeah. But so, so much chaos, but also so much clutch potential as well, which is why I love watching this hero. Because you watch someone get into a risky position, copy someone, try and play for the ult, they can hit a huge shatter and change the entire course of the fight. Or they can be fairly useless with the heroes that they replicate as well. And teams are still, pl players are still figuring this out and trying to find the best usage. As you can see, we're moving over to the university section. Very close quarters, which means that probably not going to see that much echo. Much more suited to yeah. the, the May Reaper comps, so the team switch over to that. They're going to be brawling now. The difference is Philly going to be running Fury on the Diva role that he's known for. The wall goes up, though, and that means that Sado will go down. He gave Paris a necessary intro to see if they can find that kill. With that one pick advantage, they're in a good place because if you're missing one of your main tanks. Paris have a lot more staying power on this point. And they should be able to get it for free. Indeed, they do. Fusion don't want to contest, but now they're going to start to regroup and repush. We know that both of these teams are very good at the May Reaper kind of compositions. Han been playing it with an Orissa as well. That's going to be really difficult for Philly to get back in control of this. Bionade. Nice Bionade, though. That's good from Alarm. Connects onto three. It's going to give them a small opportunity. Pulled in, though. Hisu falls down. He's got a teleport, though. He's going to instantly go back to his team, but too little, too late. Sada gets yoinked in, frozen up, and he's taken down the Coalescence. Committed here by Fielder. He's having a good first showing. And like I said, it is so difficult to be able to recontest this point when Ben Best and Hanbin have set up with that double shield, Reinhardt and Orissa on the point. The first fight's so crucial, and Philly are just waiting for all of these ults to get one good opportunity to be able to retake control. Maybe Nico almost has the Blizzard ready and waiting. Let's see what he can use for it now, and it is difficult for Fusion to push in, but the Nanaboost is going to get committed now onto Sado. He is split off though as the Ice Wall goes up. It's going to be the Sand Barrier also committed now for the Pirates Eternal. A lot of ultimates used across the board. Sado searching for a good Earth Shatter opportunity. Swinging away, blocks the first one. Still not going for one of his own. In fact, he doesn't need it because his team is pumping in the damage. Ivy with two kills. The Icicles finding their mark. And it's going to be all Philadelphia Fusion as they are able to retake this point. I want to point out how perfectly that was played by Philadelphia. They push in and they immediately put pressure on Nico because they want to force out a Blizzard. And Fury is just watching him the whole time. If Nico had used Blizzard there, Fury definitely would have eaten it. That entire play by Philly was designed to put pressure on Nico, force out a bad, bad Blizzard, and eat it up. And Nico just had to save it instead. At least now he has it to be able to attack again. He does. So that's a Blizzard. So does Ivy, though. More opportunities to trade it out. Now Ice War's going to be traded by both these teams. But look at that, the damage is already pumped in. Soon goes down. I don't know if he had his great form on cooldown or what, but you see the Ice War forced out by Nico. Coalescence by Field as he tries to keep his team alive, but Bembes frozen. Defensive Ice War used by Nico once more. No ultimates really being committed at all here by Philly. Still a five on the board. It's looking very good for them right now as the Nanabu is finally going to get used, and he's just swinging into the Bionade. That's all alarm, baby. Committed in the Bionade. Made them so they couldn't really heal up whatsoever. And that gives Sada the opportunity to just swing through them with the Nana Boost. And he finds the opening picks. Yeah, really phenomenal play there by Philadelphia. The way that they're utilizing their ultimates and just putting pressure in the neutral game onto Paris. So they find it difficult to even get in through that choke point. And then it only takes one ult and one Bionade. And Philly have won it with a fantastic ult bank to be able to go into these final couple of fights. Shadow with the oh. flank! What if I just witness with that one? Good reaction times from FD God. Comes in with a sound barrier though. He's gonna come back from it and soon ends up finding the pick up to Ivy. What a beautiful play by Sado. Unfortunately, the follow up wasn't quite there. Instinctual, if you will, but still, it might be good enough for Philadelphia Fusion. It forced out the sound barrier, which means Philly can come back in with one of their own. But the Astro gets much better at one off. 
So the Death Blossom be committed by Hisu as well as he chases Nico down into the depths of University, finds a second kill as well, making the third. He's in the back line, just ravaging the opposition. He's a hungry, hungry boy, but not quite a hippo. And we're going to see Philadelphia Fusion as they trigger over this overtime, starts to trickle down. Fielder desperately trying to stall this one out. But I think this might be curtains for them as Philadelphia Fusion are looking clean right now. And they're going to be able to take map number one. Yeah, well, that's a ridiculous play by Sado towards the end to knock nice. everybody down. Ridiculous. And FD God did what he could, right? He pops almost a perfect sound barrier to be able to keep the rest of his team alive. And they managed to find the kill on Ivy. So that went about as well as it possibly could after the Shatter had hit. But with everybody down on the floor, the Philadelphia Fusion were eventually able to clean up. They had a better sound barrier afterwards. I, I want to say that that was about as perfect as it could go. Yeah for the Philadelphia Fusion. As soon as they uh, attacked again and took recontrol of the point, that was a great round of university, proving that they can play the Echo comps, the Dive comps to a very high level, and the May Reaper comps to a really high level as well. Uh, I think that this has showcased some beautiful team synergy so far of one of the best teams that we currently have in the league. Yeah, I think this is one of the big difference makers between the very best teams is the ability to you know, play the Echo comps, play these neutral compositions and, and just succeed with both of them. Um, Philadelphia Fusion, great showing so far. We're going to go to a break. When we come back, we'll see. Can pass Eternal bring it back? The Overwatch League is brought to you by Cheese It Groups. Deep flavor, deep crunch. It's a mind crunch. And by Zip Chair Game, the official chair supplier of the Overwatch League. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Welcome back, everybody, to the Overwatch League. If you're just joining us, you're in the midst of a great match between the Philadelphia Fusion and the Paris Eternal. And it's going up to be a, a very special one, actually. Um, special because, uh, you know, me, personal big fan of the French, um, Josh as well. He's been to France many times in yeah. his life. Um, yep. Big fan of the bread scene in, in, in France itself. But we'll see if the baking skills can help them uh, come back because they're currently down 1-0 in the scoreline. Yeah, they are. I, I, both of these two teams have historically been really close uh, with each other. Uh, the only loss that the Philadelphia Fusion have, that's to the Paris Eternal. Both of the games, 3-2. Yep. Um, 
Like we said at uh, the beginning of the match itself, recently the teams seem to have gone in kind of opposite directions, with Philly looking better and better and Paris slipping a little bit, but I think it all comes down to which team grasps the Echo stuff m more than the other. I think we've, we've seen previously that uh, in Dive, for example, which was when the Paris Eternal uh, ended up coming away with the, the win, with teams playing the uh, Tracer and the Soldier a lot, uh, that that was an opportunity for a team to just figure out the meta and figure out a style of playing it a little faster than an opponent and to be able to get a win there. So I think there's definitely opportunities for Paris to come back into this. We haven't seen them play any Echo so far. And I, I don't think that that's going to stay the, the whole way. That would be re really strange. Um, especially because we are now heading into Numbani. Yep. And Numbani has many, many opportunities to take advantage of the high ground, to be able to have your Echo in great locations. It's also great for the Ash on defense to counter it if Paris want to run that. But uh, I think we'll see a bit of both. Well, if you think about it, historically over the course of, uh, I guess, Numbani's existence, Farah first pushes, Farah first holds can be quite common, uh, mainly because the skybox is so high. And in some ways, yeah. you know, we're not seeing Farah because obviously... Mercy is, is out of rotation, but um, yeah. Echo is, is more than good enough by herself um, to really try and crack into these points. So the Barney definitely seems like a map that would suit some Echo play, um, if you really want to think about it in the most basic of levels. Uh, now, Bren, have you also noticed that we've made a substitution on the Philadelphia Fusion side? Yo, it okay. EQO. EQO. EQO is back in. Emotional quotient. I, I'm a big fan of EQO, uh, personally. Just chatting to him, uh, I think he's a great lad. Very intelligent, very headstrong as well. Um, Absolutely. But a very talented player. And it, it feels like it's been a while since we've really talked about EQO, but this is one of the guys that really you know, makes a name for himself as being one of the better Western DPS players, one of the best Western DPS, uh, DPS players potentially in the world. And now we get to see him play some Echo. So this is going to be exciting. He's going to be going head-to-head -head against Nico. Nico, of course, on the Pirates Eternal, attacking. See him rolling out now the double shield composition. See what and that makes me think, Bren, that EQO is probably the best Echo for the Philadelphia Fusion. And I think Ivy was run in order to play the May yes. because they knew that they would have to play May Reaper at certain points on Oasis, namely that university stage. So now I'm interested because this Nico EQO Echo battle it promises a lot more than the Tracer Ooh, did in the first Look at that halt into the dynamite. A lot of damage, and Hisu connects it onto Nico. He finds the kill. I don't know if the Immortality Field came out, but I mean, Fielder. Yeah, it did come out. It was a little bit too late, though, so couldn't save Nico. Those kind of set plays are brutal when they pay off. And the halt is so powerful when it connects with the dynamite and also connects with the sticky bombs coming out from the Echo. And Philly are running their Ash on the opposite side as well. Very difficult for you to be able to get any pressure on Hisu. Okay, that was pretty sick by Fury. He positioned his shield as he saw the Hulk coming out. Blocked any sort of follow-up coming out from him. But look at that accretion! The damage being pumped in from the Sticky Bombs as well. Ikio is making it look easy. He gets halted, 45 HP. Has to back off. Just watching the angles. Good cross that place. Like to see it. But my goodness. I mean, right now, this is just brutal for Paris to try and push into. It is, and they need some kind of opportunity uh, to crack in through that top left-hand side. And that really requires some kind of ults to be built up. But their compositions are so slow and there's so many shields in the way, they're really not building their ults very fast at all. Yeah. Um, so potentially a different option might have to be explored here because with only two minutes left, this hasn't really gone so well. Okay. The halt and the window, though, is going to provide an opportunity to enter through this top left. The window's committed, but I mean, Philly, uh, I mean, Paris, they're just not getting anything done. And look at that, the Gravitic Flux gets sent straight up flying. Hisu's able to find the pick onto soon. Christian once more goes flying, it's going to knock a couple of players down. This is so good. EQO from EQO copies as well. over. Second Gravitic Flux. Second Gravitic Flux now, so. Building it up in a rapid time, that duplicate just really doing a lot of damage, forcing Paris Eternal back. Now, FD God was forced to use his rally there. So now Paris Eternal are going to be able to push in with the rally armor, which could pose problematic for Philadelphia Fusion. But Sato going to send in his own supercharger. Bob goes in as well, and Bob is putting in work alongside EQO. The sticky bombs just do far too much damage. Look at that. Perfectly aiming ahead. Going to try and take a 1v1 now against Nico. Fury will steal it with a quick little punch, 1-2. There you go, Mike Tyson, eat your heart out. And Philadelphia Fusion are looking fantastic thus far. 
Yeah, Hisu and Ikiwo have been lights out, but also the coordination of their team. Uh, Paris had really one good opportunity there, which was their halt window well, to be able to push in the upgrade. So. And now, I mean, they've got they've the got same ults. kind of thing again, yeah. but they've got more ults on the side. So this has to be it now for Paris. With one minute left on the clock, they must break it open. Yeah. Ult comes up, Dynamite once more is going to be connecting. This time he wants it. All Mortality Field gets forced out pretty early. You can see Paris trying to play aggressively here with their ultimates. The window goes down, but Fusion just waited it out. And now, looks like Yukio is trying to get a bit of damage off the side. Nico going to be duplicating. The Sigma just trying to build up a Gravitic Flux as it gets sent out. It's only 80%, 90%, almost got it. Just waiting for the right opportunity. What's out field not going down, but Ikio! Oh my goodness! Comes in from the side. Now he's going to be duplicating over onto the Brigitte, just swinging away in close quarters. And I, I feel like we've just returned to, to a previous meta, Josh. A, pre a previous meta with potentially three tanks, three supports, maybe? I love it! <laughs> Yeah, it really does seem like it at times, doesn't it? It depends who the Echo copies. Shout out to Fury there as well for building up another Flux in the time that it took Hanbin to build up one. Fury has had two. And EQO as well, just picking off both DPS. This has been lights out performance yep. from the Philadelphia Fusion. Soon moves over to the Tracer to try and delay the point. They've gone for more of a divey setup here. The Paris are clutching at straws. Very divey. Hisu off onto the flank. No one's taking care of him. Hisu, though, no. oh, he misses the dynamite, but it's okay because the Philadelphia Fusion have taken care of the front lines. Despite the fact that they lose their Ash player, EQO just will be able to pump in the damage with the sticky bombs. Laser beam just going to be executing, hand been down. One last player onto the point, it's Fielder, but he will be evaporated. And that is going to mean that the Paris Eternal, they only get 55% on this point. Still a winnable scenario for Paris, and we've seen these kind of oh. maps being winnable, especially on the Mbani. Look at the match chat, Bren. EQO <laughs> says, good try. Good try! I mean, the Paris Eternal only got 55% and EQO was dominating yeah. them, clapping I, them! And he puts a good try in the chat! I've missed EQO so much. I've actually missed him, man. He, he, he's not afraid to talk the trash talk. We need oh, more of this he, in the no, league. You know, <laughs> leaning towards giving EQO the early player of the match just so we can see that, po <laughs> you know, that post-match interview. Maybe see him trash talk a little bit more. Who knows? Yeah, yeah Fusion though. It's been they, a while since this guy's been played. Fusion, look so clean in terms of their coordinating of the, of the micro abilities and this is something that we've seen uh, you know overwatch players not not to say that overwatch players or overwatch league pro players have never done this before goats but especially i think goats when we saw the triple tank triple support uh, you know meta it really trained a lot of these individual players on on the importance of comboing up these little micro abilities Holt being one of the bigger ones you've got to be able to coordinate it and philadelphia fusion i swear down they got that Halt Dynamite combo off every single time. Yeah. Halt Dynamite and Stickies. And I mean, uh, even before GOATS though, Bren, this Philadelphia Fusion team with Sado on the Orisa, they made the Grand Finals yes. playing yes. Double Sniper with the Halts, and they had to combo a lot of stuff there as well. So they, they've always been pretty good at syncing that kind of stuff up. All right, Paris running the exact same composition on defense here. And we'll see whether they're able to make it work. What is the Philadelphia Fusion's answer? Because running the Ash on this off angle does present a, a really difficult attack. Is EQO going to go for a flank? Are they going to try and put pressure on soon, perhaps? Or do they just play standard and push top left? They're just going to run Alarm instead. So a bit of the Discord Orbs gives them uh, some more damage, a bit more of a weak condition. Better shield break. Better shield break. Also, one less target for a duplication from the Echo is actually... And they are threatening the flank with both of their DPS. Yep. Both Hisu and EQO have gone coast in order to put cross-angle pressure onto Alarm. the Paris Eternal. Finds the pick onto soon. And now with that, another one as well. Two picks for him. This might just be it. The Paris Eternal crumbling. Alarm finds three. Absolutely absurd stuff. This was what we were promised when this guy was joining the league. He was hyped up, living up to it in the final moments right now. This map, but... What a one-sided affair. The Philadelphia Fusion taking map number two. And are we going to see any more trash talk from EQO? That's really all I'm thinking. Yeah, I think he's chat? already done it. He, he's let the match speak for itself oh at that my. point, though, hasn't he? That was domination. Alarm coming in. Ooh. So I love the strategic swap there for the Philadelphia Fusion. They push both of their DPS onto the flank so that Paris have to put shields on the, the opposite side to shield off the Ash and the 
uh, Echo. And then the amount of damage coming from the Batiste and from the Zen and from the Sigma just crushes them in the front and Alarm just hits every shot because of course he does. Yep. He's Alarm. He's alarm. Yeah, and, and there was there was rumors, there was whispers, you know, people saying, I don't think Alarm's that good. I think he's overhyped. Yeah. He's coming in now, yeah. you know, he switches over to the Zen in the final couple of moments, but still popping off, isn't he? So, beautiful showing from Philadelphia Fusion. And uh, we are going to be seeing, you know, what our analyst desk has to say about this match thus far. I'm certainly excited. Don't go anywhere. There's more gameplay coming up after the break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, helping you stay connected to what matters most. Learn about T-Mobile's COVID-19 response on T-Mobile.com. And by State Farm. For auto, home or renter's insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hello and welcome to our game break presented by Pringles Wavy. I am Zoe, joining me at Costa and Reinforced. And the Fusion are stomping. <laughs> I don't wow. even, I did not expect such a one-sided nope. affair. I got to be honest with you. I did I did honestly think that we're going to see a lot more from Paris than what we ended up seeing. And I really struggled to really, you know, figure out if this is Paris playing bad or Fusion just being so incredible dominant that no other team could actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. But... Both? Let's just, uh, yeah, maybe it's a <laughs> bit of both, actually. Uh, let's uh, let's discuss the match uh, and have a little visitor here. Aww. Nori, also very eager to talk about the fusion. A big fan, um, he told me. Yeah. <laughs> Not biased. Also, I have food on my desk. So, uh, <laughs> that, that'll also I'm, do it. I'm, try I'm trying to actually keep him away from my food uh, for most of this segment. So, guys, you can uh, take over All and right, I make sure he doesn't eat bread. It's like last weekend we saw... Florida just beat down Boston and get the fastest record. And then Guangzhou's like, I can do it better. And then they did. And now we have <laughs> Philly being like, no, 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 no. 
This is weak source, okay? It is, we'll show you how to do it. And they are absolutely running through this match right now. It's it's not even close. It's honestly, I think Philly just playing so well uh, coordinated, but the crazy thing about it is they're just, they subbed in a bunch of different people. We had EQ, uh, EQO come in in the second map. We had Boombox come in in the second map. They're just sort of building the depth of their roster and just absolutely putting on a clinic against this Paris Eternal roster. Yeah, it looks so casual. And that's what's yeah. so weird about it. Like, <laughs> oh, we're the Philadelphia Fusion. We're just gonna enter the server. We're chilling. A hey, good try, you know. It's pretty, pretty <laughs> close. But sorry, we're Fusion. We're one of the best teams in the league. So really, I'm, I'm I mean, I'm just surprised by how easy they make it look. Um, again, we saw yesterday the San Francisco Shock beat using Outlaws on Umbani with a similar setup where you have the Ash in the back, etc. So that was pretty easy execution. But then you see these small little twists where you have Alarm pushing in on the high ground, and then you have a flanking EQO with the Echo getting picks, and then EQO getting so many picks by himself uh, on the back line of Paris, etc. Like, they're just... They're playing this composition really well, but then they're playing with such confidence that they're able to flank in so many aspects and put pressure on so many angles of the Paris Eternal team. It's just so impressive. It's just great Overwatch. Yeah. It really is. And we had uh, a lot of great highlight-worthy moments there. It was a bit of a... I feel like all the Fusion players just use it as a... a an opportunity to you know get some clips for the highlight reel one of them actually made it in ours in our crunch and presented by pringles wavy we got a we got a fatty shatty oh, a real girthy yeah one. like a, a, a very fat oh, one. yeah it was thick as they say these days okay we had, okay we had Let's the reinhardt down. flank through the side <laughs> hole and make this just absolutely ridiculous play. You can see him checking out if the coast is clear from the side. It's not even a Lucio speed boost one. It's just a coming out of nowhere flank shatter. The Paris Eternal does do well on the fact that uh, FD God does get the beat off because he doesn't get hit by it. But this just sets up the fight. And, you know, when you're in a, like, a massive ult fight, forcing out so many ults and forcing them so low, so early is just such an important thing. So big play by Sada. But this is what I mean with playing with confidence, right? Because so yeah. many things could go wrong. Like, Benbus could just turn his shield, block it, and then the Paris Eternal would have free entry to the point. But Philly does this over and over again. We see it now very clearly because it's a big shatter. It has a great effect on the Paris Eternal team. But this happens with so many other heroes. It, same goes for e e EQO's Echo. Like, these kind of flanking plays and big plays have a huge difference. And the fact that Philly just takes these big risks with such confidence and make it work, I mean, it's just spectacular to watch. I love to see it. This, it looks so one-sided. Bren asked us what to talk about going into the, uh, what we're going to talk about in the halftime. Like, I, I don't even know. Like, I, it's just, I, I mean, you can just, just appreciate, uh, just appreciate Fusion. Yeah, just just a appreciation game break for uh, the Philadelphia Fusion. Let's see if they can keep it up in the second half or if the Paris Eternal will find a way to get back into the game. I certainly hope so, as I would love to see both of those teams playing these, uh, these compositions and this very meta to a very high level. But we will find out what will be the case. And for all the action, we're heading back over to Sideshow and Bren. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles Wavy. Big crunch, big flavor.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by HyperX. Unleash your style, unleash your fury. With HyperX Fury Memory. And by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Hello everybody, welcome back. No, I, I wasn't I wasn't kipping, I wasn't staring off into space. I was just I thinking was. about a variety of uh, of games that we're about to see witnessed. No, namely, it's going to be the Philadelphia Fusion versus the Pirates Eternal. And, well, it's been an interesting one. You know, the halftime crew, they had a bit to, to say about it. Josh, what did you think of what they had to say? <laughs> well, it was just an appreciation for how well the Philadelphia Fusion were playing, and that, uh -huh. that's what caused my little reverie as well, you know, just, just thinking up all the amazing team comps. Oh, yeah, just staring they're off into the distance, thinking about how team. good Philly are. Just such a good team, Brent. And, you know, sometimes it just renders me speechless, and that was one of those occasions you just found us <laughs> speechless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I think that Paris will have to make a bunch of improvements to be able to get back in this game because the the level that they're playing at is not bad by any means, but it's like it's very average. It, it it's just pretty default. And the Philly uh, Philly Fusion are playing special. They they're making flanks happen. They're making plays on a brand new composition, um, and that that takes a lot of. Uh, pre-built trust between the team and an understanding of how far you could push each hero so at the moment for the looking very very good on this comp yes they are yeah now the next map that we're going to be going to is Vosky industries another map where I, I, i'm going to keep making these comparisons because you sometimes see a little bit of fire compositions being played on Vosky, um and echo has kind of almost taken that role especially now as i've said before Mercy's out of rotation, kind of the thing that normally enables Farah. You don't quite need a Mercy uh, in play to play Echo all the time. She's just that I strong think, right now. I think this is a really interesting point, Brent, but I'm going to have to like kind of fundamentally disagree with you. Okay. And I hate doing that, okay. but in my opinion, Farah doesn't work similarly to Echo kind of at all. Uh, because if you think about like the, the role that Farah has on a team, they're, they're quite passive. They tend to sit at a distance and they're just doing... Uh, large damage uh, and so it's good for if you're trying to uh, force positioning okay. of people they have to play inside cover this kind of stuff whereas really with an echo what you're doing is like harassing the back lines all the time and you're, you're making use of your high mobility to be able to get in harass the back lines get out and to be able to use the um the verticality of your hero a bit more. so i feel like she's more of a um a three-dimensional a Genji, if, uh, more than anything. As weird as that sounds, the kind of role that she fills yeah. in the team is more of that backline harassment. She's almost, maybe even like a three-dimensional tracer is a better way to put it, because she's hard to pin down, and she just constant, uh, constantly harasses your backline, and she's able to kind of juggle from high ground to low ground. So I think she's going to be great on um, on Volskaya here as well. I, I do like the fact that she's being paired with an Ash for the Philadelphia Fusion. The Paris Eternal are going to have to go all in on this dive, and that's why No Smite comes in as well. Now, Josh, I see your point about the Echo, but I'm not going to disagree with you. If, uh, well, I'm going to disagree with you on Plat Chat uh, a little bit later this week, but <laughs> not right now, because the game is kicking off the Philadelphia Fusion versus the Paris Eternal. And as you can see, a couple of changes are being shifted around here. The Paris Eternal opting for this dive on the defense. Now, interesting, you, you know, Winston's no stranger to this first point of Volskaya, but you've got to be able to yeah. take advantage of the early. Look at that hold coming out very fast from the Philadelphia Fusion. He's going to yoink him, but as I was interrupted mid-sentence, you've got to take advantage of the rotations. You've got to be able to build up your primal range fast, otherwise the defense doesn't work. They're going to be going for this now. The hold does not connect, blocked off by Nosemite's bubble. Cure is still trying to find an angle or two with these sticky bombs. Paris now playing back a bit more defensively on the point while the Philadelphia Fusion take a high ground approach. And they're trying to rotate Hisu into the best position possible. Yuko comes around to try and block Yuko from taking that high angle. ground. Here. Shots get eight yeah, up. that's nice. By Hanbin, still hunting. Not Hanbin, I should say. Fury, apologies. But Fury finds Nico, takes him out. It's going to be a lot less damage now for Paris Eternal to try and work with here. Nosemite is not any closer to his Primal Rage. The team are desperately trying to make something work, but the Philadelphia Fusion is running rings around them. 
Yoinking knows my forward, bringing him down to 80 HP, has to back off to the rest of his team, and out of fusion, have complete control of the point. They've locked themselves down, and they can play around this Orisa Shield as kind of the central force on the point. Now you can see Ikyo using his laser beam, peppering in the damage, the sticky bombs just unloading into them, and now he's going to start hunting for some targets. Eats up Nico, makes short work of him, and Paris has no choice but to try and really rethink how they're going to push this one. Off to try and go in now. It's now or never. Have to force them away up the point if they can get a pick off. It would be good, but those fights being pushed around all over the bloody shop. And eventually ends up going down, but not before putting in enough damage to bring down EQO. So it's still a winnable scenario for the Pirates of Terminal. Very difficult though for them. No Smite went down before he could use his Primal Rage. Philadelphia have got all of their ults online as well. It seems inevitable. And when I'm looking at how this team composition works for Philadelphia, it almost seems undiveable. Uh, Soon and Nico were able to do very little there. And, and mostly, when you saw the Nana Boost being put onto No Smite, he instantly flew backwards. Yep. Now, I couldn't tell in the heat at the moment whether that was a whip shot, whether it was a halt, whether it was the coach gun coming out from the ash, but the fact that there's three different things that Diva it could have been. as well. Yeah, it could have been Diva Boop. So there's so many ways of being able to peel away people that are trying to dive you here if you're playing as Philly. And then EQO can always just counter attack and play the back lines. <laughs> That's so sad. That's one of the yeah. saddest things I've ever seen a Winston player achieve. I mean, it knows Mike desperately trying to go for it. He's going to use his Primal Rage, but that's going to cause EQO to use his Duplicate and dive straight into the back line and look at that ult charge meter revving up, hunting for the Primal Rage. Nice little whip shot to peel away. EQO actually can't find his ultimate in time. He doesn't have much Duplicate left, only one second. He's going to fade back. Another try shot, you can see him just trying to pump in that damage. It's a chaotic, it's a messy fight. But this might be the fight the Paris Eternal wanted. Fury now can be using his bomb in the back line. But not before eating up the pulse bomb from Zoom, removing some of that damage. Dynamite gonna be unleashed now. Nose might force the back off and get healed up, but he just jumped straight into the line aside of Bob. And Bob has just been slowly capping up this point by himself. Already a tick now on the board for the Philadelphia Fusion, and they're still alive. So much sustain available to them. The laser beam from EQO is going to be shredding them, putting in so much damage. Along with the sticky bombs, they get the d Meg hand bin will fall. They have so much presence right now. It's so tough for the Paris Eternal to try and combat this. EQO is going to be hunting down soon as he tries to find him. The sticky bomb is not able to connect onto the targets. It's a little bit hard to find that 150 HP target in the first place. But look at this, the Paris Eternal struggling now. They have to try and contest the oh. point. They only have a couple of percentages left. Gonna take some clutch plays from soon to make it happen though. It looks like they are doing a great job of it. Pisu falling. Knows my has the primal rage. He's gonna get it off, but again, another whiffed leap. Does not matter as he brings down Sado. Let's see if he can get any value in the close quarters with the primal rage. Puts it off. See if he can get a kill or two. He's getting stunned up. Booped all over the bloody shop once more. Alarm now using the rally. One of the longest team fights I've had to cast in quite some time. It's never ending, Josh. <laughs> it's never ending. The fight's still continuing. And the beatdown from Soon. Is he really going to be able to clutch this one up? Sending it in. He's got the rally armor on top. Everything available to him. The resources. It's an absolute kerfuffle in the lower pits of Volskaya. <laughs> but the Paris Eternal come out on top. Oh, that, that fight was truly ridiculous. And if you count this death on Sado, it only just ends now. What? what a crazy fight. The rallies just kept the fights going forever. They're not they're not short like a normal support ultimate. They drag the fights out longer and longer with those armor packs allowing people to survive. And then because the echoes themselves are really survivable, they've got so much dodging and mobility. And even when they Yeah, when they swap over to one of the tanks, they've got so much more health. <laughs> That fight just went on forever, but I will say, I think you were right there, soon clutched out. He got some really crucial picks, he killed Hisu a couple of times. Bionade from Fielder as well, connecting onto three, that's gonna force the fusion back, and that's gonna trigger the dive now, they have to go in here, Nico no. Ooh, okay, the tracking comes out, Fielder though, as well, connects it. EQO falls, you're losing a lot of damage now if you're the fusion, and you're missing one of your central pieces to this composition, you gotta back off, you gotta rethink, because you only have a minute, 20 seconds. Could the Paz Eternal be battling back here? Fury has eaten so many pulse bombs. I think he's eaten three, but it might have been four so far this map. And okay, it's not the biggest thing in the world because pulse bombs don't often hit anyway, but the fact that he's on top of it, I mean, Fury is so good. 
dive attempt once more. The Nana Boost is ready. Nico has to try and bring down his supercharger. Does it eventually. But now we see the duplicate being used by EQO. He's still one of the tanks. Nico going to be opting for the Orissa. Actually wants a taste of that medicine. Goes straight in for the Holt. Sees if he can combo with anything. But he gets forced out of it as he gets bursted down. Hisudo comes in with a tactical visor. And he's actually finding kills. It's a miracle, Josh. It's a Christmas miracle. Two picks now for the Philadelphia Fusion. Can they find a third? The Holt comes up but eaten in the end by Hanbin. And now it's the re-engagement coming in from the Paris Eternal. Nico from the skies, desperately trying to burst down some damage from above. Boombox is the one who's finding the picks, though, in the meantime. And EQO are going to be trying to deal with him in the flank. Look at the sticky bombs! Headshots on headshots. Nico will fall. And there's just a few remaining stragglers. Paris Eternal desperately trying to hold on to this point. Alarm with the whip shot, though, bringing down soon. Only a couple of players remaining. It's desperation time now from those. Might Nico switching over to the Doomfist, but as soon as he falls, that might just be it. And finally, the Philadelphia finish with two seconds and seven microseconds, milliseconds. I don't know mathematics, Josh, but they, Philadelphia <laughs> Fusion, say they got it anyway. Yeah, yeah, they're probably microseconds. Just that micro <laughs> in the front of it. That's They're small, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a unit yeah. of measurement that I've never had to use before. Yeah, that's also really clutch, though. I mean, the fact that they were able to cap with 2.7 seconds left on the clock means that they will have time available next time. Let's take a look at the replay here from Boombox as well. Uh, sorry, from Hisu. This is how he was able to pick up all of those players in the back line. Just both of those support yeah. players for the Paris Eternal. They didn't know it was coming. I like how you said... I'll tell you uh, what as well, Brent. Go ahead. Oh, go on. No, 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 no you please, first. after no, you. I couldn't possibly. You first. I couldn't possibly, I couldn't, Brandon. I couldn't My point was you. ancillary okay, to Okay, I was just going to, I was just, okay, if you insist. I was just going to say, I like how that you, uh, you said boombox instantly um, when you saw the Soldier 76 on the Philadelphia Fusion. Bit of a throwback <laughs> there. But I, I've got something a little bit more important to talk about, Josh, and it's the fact that, you know, we're Activision Blizzard and the Overwatch League are supporting the World Health Organization uh, to encourage all of our players to play a part together. So when we play a part together using... One of the most powerful preventative strategies to protect ourselves, our loved ones and others. So that's right, don't be visiting any beaches, anybody, because we all have the power to combat this pandemic by staying at home and playing together online. Now, I certainly have been regressing into my goblin state. Um, sure. Yep, my posture's been terrible. So posture check everybody at home as well if you're watching at your computer screens. You know, make sure you're fixing that one. Hydrate as well, get some water in you. And let's take a look. Paris Eternal on the attack, going for the dive again. And Philadelphia Fusion opting for the double shield. This worked so well for them on Numbani. And again, it's the kind of map where Hisu can take off angles. He can be pressured a little more easily than on Numbani because he's a bit further away from the rest of his team if he holds literally on the Ooh, other side so, of the map. So, so, hello? Hello? Soon just soon jumps off the map! Soon! Hello? I, I, hey, I think he just missed his blink. I think maybe he was trying to triple blink to the other side so they could put pressure on Hisu and he just he just hit his head. We'll never know. He planned. We'll never know. No one no one no one load up no one load up the replay viewer. No one check. No one that didn't happen. It didn't happen. Erase it from the archives. It didn't happen. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh no, not no, the replay. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why you gotta do it like oh, that, my production? Goodness. The Overwatch what League. Are you gotta do You're it. just soon stonks going down into the gutter. Uh, oh. Well, don't worry about it. That was only a minute off the clock. Yeah, 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 sure. They've got another three opportunities to push here. Philadelphia Fusion as well, but look at the difference in ult charge between EQO and Nico. EQO already with the duplicate and the damage being pumped in. Those might. Again, he tried to leap in, had to use his bubble, got halted, got dynamited, absolutely everything. And I've got to say, there's a lot of pressure now. Hanbin needs to be eating up these dynamites. There's nothing more obvious than a dynamite. I mean... Well, just eat the halt to start with, right? Uh, I mean, the dynamite is a bit of damage, sure. But if you if you get halted, then that means the sticky bombs and the dynamite will definitely hit you. So if you eat the halt, your position isn't forced. That, that really has to be the key here, I think, to cracking this comp. All right, step one, eat the halt. But if you can't do that, the dynamite. Sure, sure. That's fine, Brett. Okay. Happy with that. Engagement from Paris Eternals. You can see the nano boost is going to be used here. Fielding tried to find a target. I believe that was on the nose might. Indeed it was. Takes out the immortality field. And now the primal rage. Perfect positioning. Can nose might capitalize? He's trying to find some targets. He's trying to get the control over. There you go, baby. Nose might with the 2K. Finding a Fury and Saddle off the map. The Fortify could not save them, was not there in time. And the Pans Eternal have just opened this point up.
off the back of some very lovely control there by Nosemite. That's some stellar Winston gameplay. It seems kind of poetically beautiful that after Soon threw himself off the map in their first push, Nosemite would do the same to their opponents to secure point A. Four minutes still on the clock. That's a great time for being able to push point B. Definitely possible for Paris to complete here. But the the snowball isn't quite up. They do have the rally to work with, but Alarm will have his, and they have the flux available as well. This is going to be a difficult point to crack. And again, you see those halts coming out from Sato. So well synchronized with the rest of his team. So key. The Philadelphia Fusion being 2 0 up right now. Not over just yet, though. Fast Eternal really making a meal out of it. You can see them using the Gravitic Flux. They force out ultimates. Now you can see the rally being used by FD God. Supercharger by Sado, but it's about it's out in the open and it gets destroyed almost instantly. Holt does not connect. Nose might force off onto the wayside, but Nico finds the kill onto Hisu. That's a great opening pick for them now as Hampton's taking the off angles, finding so much damage, pumping it into the Philadelphia Fusion. Hisu now forced over. Two to Doomfist to try and contest this one a little bit longer, but they've already got two ticks and counting. Moving over onto the point stun, perfect at the time. See the immortality field by Boombox as well, trying to keep them alive, but Alarm will not be long for this world. Duplicate by EQO has already built up the Primal Rage. This could be the clutch that they needed to try to force them out. Boombox now going to be prioritizing the back line. Boombox takes out Nico and the Ember soon. Over onto the Tracer, trying to clutch it up. Eventually taken out in the meanwhile. Still, the fight continues, the time ticking over. Fusion have players onto the point, but it seems like the past Eternal are slowly edging this one in their favor. Nose Might's Primal Rage just about fades, but not before the damage is done. And that is going to be a very, very nice time bank for the Pirates Eternal. 3 minutes 42 seconds. Great work there by Paris. They used the rally early on, but forcing out a rally early is not that important because you still have the armor and it persists late into the fight. So they were able to use the rally armor to push forwards and then a nano boost onto no smite. But I think most crucially, Nico finally comes online on his echo and takes out Hisu on the Soldier 76 right at the beginning. And that gives them a 5v6 with some ults that they were working with and Fury had already used the flux. So at that point, the gates were open and Paris do a very good job at being able to force people down one at a time. Good focus calling. And Paris come away with a much better time back here on Volskaya. Despite both of the teams performing at a fairly equal kind of level, I would say, Paris just with a really nice execution on their first try of point B. Now there's a rumor going around as well that Fielder, this, this new player for the Paris Eternal, might actually be playing from Korea. Oh, I can actually give you an update on that, Bren. Um, I got in touch with the, um, the team manager uh, from Paris Eternal, Avala, and I said, hey, Avala, is Fielder playing from Korea today? And she said, yes, he is. He has 200 ping. Well, there you go. Yeah, Fielder, obviously, you know, with the, the current uh, COVID-19 situation, visas, quite difficult to come across these days. But when you need a player, you need a player. And Fielder is playing from Korea. So if the Pirates Eternal do manage to make this reverse sweep happen, it makes it all the more impressive in my eyes, the fact that they had one of their players playing with, uh, with quite a disadvantage. But We'll see now as the Philadelphia Fusion going to start to roll out with the Orisa Diva composition. And this comp works so well for them. Hisu on the Soldier 76. They've already put so much damage out onto Nosemite. But Nosemite going to get healed up. Has to leap back though. Tank line is really quite in trouble here. Soon has to use the recall as well. Fusion just trying to find the footing that they can thus far. Trying to find a nice place to plonk down that Orisa shield. They're going to be opting now to rotate to the high ground. With 20 seconds left, they're on the high ground. Both tanks have managed to get up there as well. The halts didn't quite work oh, this time you? around. And Fielder doing incredible Fielder. damage over to EQO. Sorry, excuse me. Okay, finding the shots, despite the fact that he's playing in the past, essentially, when he's on that much of a ping. <laughs> but there we go. Nose might now going to be using his Nana Boost, leaping himself in. Boombox gets antenated up by Fielder, and Fielder takes him out anyway. That was a solo kill into the back line. Fielder might just be clutching this one, but Fusion do not want to count themselves out just yet. Nose might go down, Husu being chased into the back line. Another kill for Fielder as well. This guy making a name for himself in the Overwatch League thus far. Nico back in the fight. The Sticky Bomb's putting in damage, but Fury shuts him down regardless. Husu using that tactical visor, but as it fades, he didn't quite get the work done that he really hoping for. Let's be real. Still, the Paris Eternal with an opportunity and Fusion. They don't touch the point. They don't touch the point. Yeah, that's... Uh, that really is a bit of a classic Charlie Niner, honestly, oh. because even though they weren't likely to win that fight, 
Fury was definitely in a position to touch, and they had ults. I they think, had the rally I think that and the self destruct. For fusion, I, I think yeah, I think there was a chance certainly that they take ticks and make it at least a winnable game because now it's only drawable for the Philadelphia Fusion, uh, and that's that's a big mistake there. A big mistake. Now, Fury was sat on top of the hut. They were cycling Hisu and Boombox onto the point, and they failed to do it effectively. Here's what I want to see from the Pass Eternal. First, I want one player to type good try in all chat. Oh, yeah. That, that would, would be, be a great. great clap back, actually. That would be a nice clap back. Let's see if any of them, any of them have that on their mind. It doesn't look no, like they're it. not on two down. It, 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 the time for spicy chat is, generally speaking, not when you're facing elimination. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's I know some players disagree with me. I would I know also that they like to get spicy. I like to trash talk in my games. I, I, I like <laughs> to play the psychological warfare. You know, you want to get into your enemy's head a sure. little bit. The, I was talking to Jake about this. Jake was telling me there's certain players in the league that get tilted quite easily. And um, pre in previous years, when we didn't display the match chat, the, the, the trash talk would be flowing intentionally to try and get into somebody's yeah. players' heads. Well, apparently, the, the, the rumor around the Overwatch League goes that Jake is the person that got match chat turned off in the first place. They only thought it was safe to turn it back on this season because he was left. He had left. <laughs> So, so Listen, you're, you're, the, you're it doesn't the image. surprise me that he. It doesn't surprise me that he is the one that conducts psychological warfare. <laughs> he thinks on a different level to everyone else. Doesn't he have a psychology degree? He might. Do. I don't know. Does he? Uh, I think he studied he's psychology at uh, university. But uh, okay. right. anyway, we're tainting his his good boy image. You know, we've got to we've got to stop. So, uh, we're ruining the boy's brand. Now, now when Paris attacked previously. They found it very difficult to get no smite in position. Okay. And again, Nanabu's he's finding it hard back. to get in position. Yeah, and his leap's gone for two seconds. He's just gonna try and build But Fielder! Up. Fielder gets another pick onto EQO. I, I, I gotta say, it's absolutely astonishing what Fielder's being able to do right now on 200 ping. It is absolutely astonishing the fact that he's finding these pickoffs anyway. This guy is a real treat and Hambit with the boop off. He knocked Alarm just onto the corner, the same place where Soon met his fate. A little bit earlier, the Paris Eternal have just absolutely rolled over the Philadelphia Fusion. That's going to be a map win for them, ladies and gentlemen. Are we going to see a reverse sweep? We've already seen, you know, just countless amounts of them, but... Yeah, I think we've seen two so far this week already, right? The Valiant and uh, Shanghai Dragons both both managed to get reverse sweeps so far this week. I'm going to see another one. I, I can't remember, honestly. Those I, are the two I, that I stick know, out in I my brain. I know that the Shanghai Dragons reverse swept the New York Excelsior because I watched that match and I made the dancing coffins meme out of it. Okay. Because when sure. it was when it was two two, I could just I could feel the reverse sweep, so I just snapped a oh, picture yeah. of it. And, and uh, uh, there's so much momentum for the team that starts yeah. to come back. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I think that the important thing here as well is that previously, Fusion were playing with a lot of confidence, EQO were taking crazy flanks, and now they've started to punish it. Maybe in the weirdest way possible, with a 200 ping Anna, but they have started to punish it. I, I can appreciate it, I can appreciate it a lot, but we're gonna see more gameplay more coming up after the break. Do not go anywhere, can the pass eternal reverse sweep? We're about to find out. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, helping you stay connected to what matters most. Learn about T-Mobile's COVID-19 response on T-Mobile.com. And by State Farm. For auto, home, or renter's insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.
Welcome back everybody to the Overwatch League. We're here, you're joining us in the middle of our first series of the day. Of course, the Pass Eternal versus the Philadelphia Fusion. Now, this is honestly shaping up to be, I think, a real good match if the Pass Eternal can yeah. keep this current form going because it was looking like we were going to see one of the fastest games in Overwatch League history. Uh, ben Troutman, our stats man, was just talking. He said, uh, after the first two maps, I think it was 12 minutes something, the fastest match in recorded history, or the fastest first three maps is somewhere around 18 minutes. Um, it was looking like one of the one of the quickest games we'd seen, but the past Eternal have battled back and they've taken Volskaya Industries. Now the question remains: Are they going to be able to keep this going and end up reverse sweeping it? I mean, could happen. Well, we think about kind of what compositions these two teams have been running, and uh, a lot of the uh, first map came down to. Paris didn't want to run the Echo on the first round, mm -hmm. and then there was a mirror of Echoless stuff. And it was only on Nambani where we got to see the uh, Echo's battle, but I think Philly just had a much better understanding of how to play Nambani. Uh, the, the dive style Echo has only really been shown so far um, on Volskaya for the Paris Eternal, and I think that that style will work very well here on Route 66 as well, which is the next map that we're about to go into. So I can see a world here where Paris continue using that style with no smite on the Winston mm -hmm. to great success. What it relies on is punishing EQO because yes, it's difficult to dive the Philadelphia Fusions comp when they're running the double shield. But if there's no potential for a counter attack or you kill the player that's trying to counter attack, then you're still in a great position, even if your dive doesn't manage to get a pick. Um, so, uh, I think that this is going to be a hotly contested map. I don't think that it's going to favor either, favor either team um, enormously. Yeah, and the Paris is certainly going to be rolling out with the composition that you were talking about, Josh. The one we just witnessed on Volsky Industries. Still going to be running this Winston. And uh, just deciding where they want to set up for now. Uh, probably at the spawn doors. It's increasingly common these days. You see teams holding right at the gates. I remember when... Uh, when Overwatch first released, people criticized the players in bronze for holding this close to the spawn doors. Well, where are you at now, haters? You know, the bronze players are right Yeah, those players in bronze, yeah, yeah. The bronze players are always right, straight at the beginning. Don't talk Okay, looking for a whole hook. Oh, bronze. But, uh, they <laughs> looking for the whole hook, yeah. So we're seeing the, uh, the, the, the Orisa Roadhog composition. Not able to oh. find it. The shield just comes out from FD God. He blocked the hook. Fury gonna be making the switch now. It's a cute I love that strat play. though. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a great play because it's honestly fairly likely to result in a kill right at the beginning and it totally breaks that first point hole. It also forces people off good positions. We've seen now. You can see this damage that EQ is already pumping in, but it's Nico the one with the current advantage when it comes to his ultimate. He's almost just chunked down Hambin by himself. Sort of sticky bomb damage. So the laser beam there, just really pumping in a lot of work. Soon, just trying to. Kind of assault them, pepping them from afar, but Nico. That was far too aggressive from Nico. Yeah, a little bit egregious there. Ended up paying with his own life, and with that opening pick, it means that the Fusion can just continue to roll this one forward. You can see EQO harassing the back line here, but it is just going to be a matter of time as soon as they take care of these uh, remaining players. It's a good break for the Philly Fusion. Route 66 has classically been a great map for them as well. Um, and again, we see the pairing of Hisu and EQO. So, definitely seems like EQO is their echo of choice. Honestly, I think it would get quite confusing to play in Philly right now. Because they all call him Eco anyway. And so now Eco is playing the Eco. That's got to be confusing. Eco, Maybe that's the reason why they don't run Ivy. Because otherwise, they're just confused. They do people call EQO's name. It's a theory. Well, let's see what right? uh, Eco can do on the Echo cool as he thing. duplicates up and getting some value now as he switches over to the D.Va. Sometimes you see the player switching over to the tank characters, just get a bit more sustain onto the point. A lot more damage mitigation as well. Just trying to build up that bomb. And there you go, sends it straight into the back line, finds FD God with it. Uh, but the Fusion had won that fight long before that bomb was even built up. It felt like. Yeah, I really like the swap over to D.Va. I think both Winston and D.Va, and sometimes Orisa can be great picks for the Echo to utilize. Because you can contest people on the high grounds, you can dive them, you do damage to them, and the ults are also powerful at being able to get picks or force positioning. So I think that's where we're going to see Echo players trend more and more. 
And so far, the Philadelphia Fusion have not really been stopped. All of these dive attempts have been crushed by a good coordination. Ikuo not getting caught out of position this time, unlike the previous map. And he's just been ripping them apart with the rebound. Well, this one's going to be diving straight in. He gets the kind of boost once more. Field are going to be layering that on top of him, seeing if they can get anything done. He has the Primal Rage, remember? So it could be just choosing to knock them in, but Philadelphia Fusion using that amplification matrix, forcing them back. Now knows why he wants to go in, but Stunder oh. bashed. He could not use his Primal Rage. And that's a quick little shot from the Hellfire Shotgun from Hisu, a headshot nonetheless. And they're going to be able to take him out. Fusion really just pressing their advantage, as you can see, finding the pickoffs where necessary. Past Eternal, they are just getting crushed right now in a neutral game. And I think you can see that if you can't punish EQO, then you are going to lose. Because there's no chance that your dive is going to be effective. They have Immortality Field. They had Rally in the previous fight. They had an Ant Matrix to be able to kite. They have a Reaper and they have uh, the Halts to be able to stop everything as well. Just so many tools to be able to stop the dive coming out from the Paris Eternal. And Nico is failing in the 1v1 with the Echo, so EQO has all the space he needs to be able to do work. He's so moving into the back line. The old 1-2-Q, you know, sometimes it pays off. It worked out that time. Fielder goes down, could not hit the sleep down, unfortunately. And now with those Hellfire shotguns, he's just tearing into them. EQO ended up duplicating over to the Brigitte, so they've got Rally Armor, double Rally Armor as well. You know, sometimes make mistakes. They actually... <laughs> Their rallies ended at the exact same time, so they ended up popping rally at the exact same time. Yeah. I mean, why not, right? If you're EQO, you definitely want to use the rally. Do you, get, do you get the rally armor twice as fast if that's the case? I mean, I, I, I know there's a I don't maximum. think so. There's a maximum, right? But would it apply? Because, because the way it works is, I mean, we're going to get really deep into the mechanics of rally armor now. But I remember when people were testing it, and it's like a tick rate. Where it just it sure. applies a layer and then a layer and then a layer every uh, right. Every so second. you think that they're using double rally in order to get the, the ticks of armor quicker? Maybe. I mean, so, I'm not, so even I'm though not they sure end if it with the same amount like of that. armor. Here's the thing. I'm not I sure. I mean, yeah. There are many, many interactions in the game that are confusing now that Echo is in the game. So that's just one of them. I guess we'll have to go and test it and ask the Philadelphia Fusion afterwards why they were using double <laughs> rally so often. Okay. Nico goes down to an icicle from Nico. Oh, Nico goes. Nico takes down EQO from Nice Cool. From Nico, I should say. FD got though with the Nano Boost. Starts flailing around. He's got the Rally Armor on him as well. Rally popped off, which means it's going to stop the Fusion from pushing in anytime soon. Just sitting around this choke point. I like this change from Paris. Moving away from the Echo. I don't think Nico was doing enough work. He wasn't able to check EQO in the mirror either. So. Having a uh, May and the Ash to be able to apply pressure to the EQO and also apply pressure to the tanks. I like this swap. I think this is a really difficult point to try and get value out of EQ, uh, or out of the Echo, I should say. But they're still deciding to oh, make it work. What a shot. With the dynamite shots, will be able to take down Hisu, but stunned up. That was a Cretion. The rock came across the map there from Fury, but soon has Bob available. Still sending in the dynamites. Not able to get eaten up. And it was like the fusion is just getting bullied all around with the bloody shot now. EQO though takes out Bob. Poor Bob. Poor Bob. Poor Bob. The incredible seventh man. Yeah, not not quite to, able to do too much work there. Fine. But don't worry, soon's got it on lockdown. Uh, and now two minutes left, and I'm wondering whether Philly are gonna change something up. It seems unlikely with EQO being so close to his ultimate. If he can copy uh, honestly, Hanbin or No Smite here, because both of the ults are going to be really effective, then they're going to have big ultimates online. Yeah, and now looking to work their way around. But Fury doesn't have any plugs, we'll see if he opts to try and use it now. He's going to get utilized too early now, and Alarm using that transcendence, but damage boosted, frozen up soon with the headshot. He just one shots him. Fury now going to be coming back with. Gravitic Flux of his own, takes out two of them. Ikyo is trying to build up his own, 80% and counting. Very, very close, but only four seconds left on the duplication. Sends it up with the Gravitic Flux, but the Fortify will save those. Might, but unfortunately, the, uh, the Fortify won't save him from dying. There's the Fusion way able to just pump in the necessary damage. Back in, take him out. So the Fusion are able to push this cart along and win that team fight out, but they have a minute left on the clock. The Pass Eternal have got a lot of Ultimas to use. 
Yeah, they only just managed to win. And that that's means the Paris have a lot of ults to be able to defend with here, but that kill on hand bin is fantastic. Cancels the Gravitic Flux. That's Supercharger and the Amplification Matrix. It's so much damage, and Fury just sending in these orbs, and he's already got two kills because of it. He's 50% to his Gravitic Flux when he's just used it in a previous team fight. This is astounding play thus far from Fury. This is the reason you want to see him in, because his Sigma is just that good. Hulk comes in from the side, though. Sado not yoinked off. Hisu switching over to the Sombra just to try and stall this one out. Get back into the fight quickly. You are finding the pick off onto FD Gobby. You're going to need more than a pick to try and get some time on the point. Trying to cap this one up now. Fury uppercut it up. Going to try and peel away for the rest of his team. But Boombox going down means you're going to be lacking a lot of heals. The Immortality Field, a lot of damage as well. Pass Eternal. Really holding on now. EQO into the sidelines, just trying to get the sticky bombs off. Putting in a lot of damage. Alarm falls into the back line though as he was yoinked. And now it looks like the Pass Eternal are in a very comfortable position to try and hold this one. EQO will fall when the last Bastions to try and clutch it up, if you will. Might, I don't know why Sado's in the back line, but he is, and he's trying to take things into his own hands. Not quite working out, and I think Josh, as soon as they kill the remaining few players, this is going to be good. Certainly seems like it. A fairly good defense there on point C for the Paris Eternal. Ticked a lot of time off the clock, running their mostly Ash May setup. And Philly found it difficult to crack. I don't think, Bren, even in the current meta, that Echo is the be-all, end-all. I think there are many, many situations where teams should be swapping off the Echo, where they're just staying on it at the moment yep. because it's a fresh pick um, and because it adds chaos. And also, to be fair, there is the clutch potential of the ult. Oh, well, yeah, um, because, I'll be honest. You know, there's many ways of being able to win a fight with I that. I think this final section of Route 66 that we just saw, that, that tunnel section, not really suited towards the way Echo wants to play. Um, it's the reason you don't see Farah being played in that final section, for example. Even Widowmaker, because it's so obvious sure. from where the Widowmaker is usually going to be playing. The only times you see those picks are when people are trying to clutch in the overtime situations. I feel like Echo kind of fills in that, uh, that kind of niche um, in terms of those heroes and the way that they are played on certain maps. But as Fusion try and force it, the Pass Eternal shut them down equally. So we're going to see the sides change as the Pass Eternal are going to get their time in the sun. Their opportunity to attack. The Philadelphia Fusion going to be opting for a double shield defense. So not going to be trying to match what the Pass Eternal were running out with when they were running the Winston dive sort of defense. And the Fusion are opting for what looks like a hold on Big Earl. So that's that building that they're stood on right here. Yeah. I, I'm going to be honest, Brent. I would rather see the Paris Eternal run with an Ash Tracer setup right now. But they can't really because the, Nico doesn't play the Tracer that well. If Exy was here, but he's gone home to Korea for a neck injury. But if Exy was here, then this team would be able to run that double hitscan setup. And, and it's weird to me because we're in a situation where things have flipped around. Previously, in their first ever match when these two teams faced, Hisu wasn't available, so Philly didn't have the double hit scan setup, and that was part of the reason the Paris won. Now the shoe is on the other foot. Dynamite is applied. He has to use his bubble to mitigate a lot of the damage. He does not want to leap in. They're just getting a lot of free cart push time uh, for now. Trying to force Philadelphia Fusion to the low ground. EQO in the back line. Oh. Look at those fadeaway shots, though. He's leading them and soon just waddled into it. And now he has free reign on the back line once more. So much damage has been really utilized fully. EQO up to 60% now to his duplicate ultimate. And Philadelphia Fusion are holding significantly. EQO has been oh, dominant in this series. Uh, he's not going to be able to yeah, get I mean, that. Soon always likes to go for the back caps, but he's not going to be able to get that. That is some Metal Gear Solid stuff. Uh, he was gone. <laughs> yeah. But like I was saying, EQ has been dominating on the Echo this series because Nico isn't an effective counter to him uh, because EQ is just being able to put out more damage. His mechanics are better. And they don't like to run the Ash because, as I've said, they can't run the double hit scan right now. That's why again goes for the play. He does manage to make his way up onto the high ground, but Fusion have so many ways to mitigate any sort of leaps coming out from those might. It's hard for him to try and get position and get those for it. He does get like the kill there onto Alarm. EQO going to be swapping over to the Brigitte though, now trying to turn things around. You can see the Gravitic Flux into the air, and that provides ample opportunities for Hisu to just pluck them out. Like uh, play pigeon shooting, if you will. And the Fusion still holding strong, and they've got that Rally Armor that's just applied onto a couple of them. It begins to fade away. And Alarm is going to be having his potentially for the next team fight if he's lucky. 
I gotta be honest, I love the brig swaps. Um, I think that most of the time, tanks are the best option for, e <laughs> for Echoes to swap. Again. Oh my word! Okay. EQO is dominant yeah. on this. I mean, normally you would say that Tracer should have the matchup. Uh, should be able to counter the Echo unless the Echo is in the air. And EQO is just hitting nutty. Uh, just, just default primary yeah. fires. Try shot. I'll help you out there. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I completely agree with you. you. Think, and it's not just any tracer he's doing this against. It is soon. Pass the turtle going for another dive attempt now. But look at the amount of crowd control they've got. Halted coach gun. Push back with a whip shot. It doesn't matter. The fusion have every single tool at their disposal to just mitigate nose might. His primal rage gets nothing. The nano boost gets nothing. And the pass eternal again have to rethink how they want to push this because they only have a minute left before, that's it, that's gonna be the series. Remember, it's map point right now for the Philadelphia Fusion. Kudo slept up though, they able to get a pick, Nico! Oh my word, okay, the sticky bombs connect, and Ikiwo. That's another great play from Fielder though, right? Yeah. To even hit that sleep in the first place. Fielder has to be the answer. Now we see another team fight kicking off though, as Bob is used onto the high ground, now Hampton moving forward, Gravitic flux into the back. Pandemonium, chaos, whatever word you want to use to try and describe the current situation. I think they're all quite applicable as EQO now going to be making the switch over to the Winston. Trying to build up the Primal Rage, he's got them cornered now into the lower sections. Primal Rage now going to be used, searching for an opportunity to use it. He's going to be splitting off a couple of them, but slept up now by Fielder once more. Fielder using the Nana Boost, and Nico with the opportunity to really pop off. Finding a lot of these picks, Nose Might on one HP, EQO takes him out, it's not over just yet, the powers of turn are in trouble, EQO still in the fight, Nico desperately trying to turn this one, Hambin finally returning into the fray, the overtime ticking, there's only one player remaining, and it's Sado against the world, not quite, now the rotation's coming in as Alarm moves over to the Lucio, to just try and stall this one, they want to try and make it work, Boombox of the Immortality Field, they're keeping the overtime going. But the spawners, I don't think, favor any side. Are the Fusion really going to be able to clutch this one? Alarm, booping them away. The rotations might just be perfect, but Nose Might is back in the fight, and he has the Primal Rage. Moving into the back line, slept again, but awoken in the nick of time. Bob trying to make it work. The Gravitic Flux now used as well on top of that. The Fusion are desperate to hold on to this one, but I think the Pirates Eternal might have just clutched it in the final moment, and they finally get it. But oh my goodness, Josh, did they have to work for it. They were made to work so hard for that point A. And now with only two and a half minutes left, if they have difficulties like that, there's no chance to get point B, surely. Soon coming in on Tracer at the end there was absolutely clutch as FD God just fell fighting alongside Hanbin. By the skin of their teeth, Paris Eternal take that one. As soon moves over to the Ash. And we, we see an interesting composition on both sides now, actually. I don't think we've seen this before. More of like a, a grouping rush style for the Philadelphia Fusion versus the Ash coming out from soon. Hampton moves forward, but going to be pressured backwards now as the amplification matrix comes up. But soon, a lot of damage being pumped into them. Sado ends up falling, a quick little headshot, and they're able to find these pickoffs soon with so many kills flooding in for him. Set up as well by Nosemite's dive, his leaps disrupting the positioning from the Philadelphia Fusion, and that's going to cause them to make some switches, some changes. Hisu goes over to the 76. He's going to lock the legs yeah. up. Hisu thought that Soon was still running Tracer and got baited into running the Reaper. So now he's swapping over to a composition that allows him to counter Soon on the Ash a little bit. Nico uh, giving his team another immortality field there as they take the fight in the choke point. I don't know if that's the target he wanted though. He probably wanted one of the tank lines because he's trying to build up the amplification matrix, but can he get it down? Finally pops it, but he's being forced back by EQO as he duplicated one of the Winstons and built up the Primal Rage. And as I said before, Josh, but it's so applicable. It's just absolute chaos right now. The Hulk comes out from the fusion, but it looks like the Paris Eternal are clutching it up soon, able to build up the bomb, lays it down, and it peppers them from the sidelines. And the fusion crumbling in the last few seconds here. Two minutes now for the Paris Eternal to not even get a full capture, and they will take this map away. Super winnable right now for both sides. You can see both teams making swaps. Philly are going to defend without an Echo, which I believe is the best option here. The May and the Ash, really powerful on this final section. And Paris are wondering what to run themselves. Are they really going to commit to this dive? It seems risky, but they do have double support to try and make it work. They can definitely try and make it work, but 
I mean, we were just discussing earlier, we don't think that Echo is that good in this final section of Route 66. We'll see if they can make it work. In the meantime, the Dynamite comes out, Fielder goes for a straight sleep dart. The Nana Boost unleashed onto Nosemite, but he's falling very, very low. He got using that rally as well, but whooped back. Nosemite can't do anything. Get anything done here. And he ends up going down in the end. Rally now going to be utilized by Alarm. The Fusion are desperately not quite desperately, they're already in a very comfortable position to win this fight, but it's going to be using the ultimates on top, slapping them down just to really seal the deal. I don't think that you can run dive on this segment of Route 66. They're try and make it but work. they're going to use it with the tank ults anyway. Okay, South the Shark comes up. The Ice Wall defensively there by the Fusion. EQO using it to try and mitigate dive. It stopped the Pirates Eternal in their tracks. But now they're going to be trying to go again. Now, Nosemite is frozen up, but he has the Primal Rage. Let's see if he can do any work. Nice stick from Soon. I believe that the kill, I think that stick was onto Boombox. The kill ended up coming out for Nico in the end. This is definitely doable now for the Pirates Eternal. They are just seconds away from potentially sealing this map up in their favor. We'll see if they're able to do it. Nosemite into the back line with that Primal Rage. He's found one pick. Setting his team up, Bob though still causing the backline to be disrupted, but now they can finally move forward. That may have brought them crucial seconds though, as EQO has built up his blizzard and lays it down. The ice wall comes up as well. Nosemite in a very precarious situation. Nanaboo's being nice Nano. again, and Nico can end up duplicating the maze, so he's freezing up the Philadelphia Fusion all over the place. Hand him with the beat down. The Eternal, do not tell me you're doing this right now. I cannot believe what I am seeing. The blizzard built up almost instantly. No one can touch the court card. No one can touch the point. Then they're boots back in the Paris Eternal. Have done it. Taking map number four. And Josh, <laughs> we might be seeing potentially a never reverse sweep. Oh, it could happen here, what? friend. What a play from Paris towards the end. I think that they were kind of gifted that as well, yeah. though. The reason that I say... You, I don't think you can run dive on last point of Route 66, is that when the defenders are on the high ground, they're just going to be peppering you oh as you approach. Goodness. But for whatever reason, when it came down to that last fight, <sighs> Philly decided to get off the high ground and sat on the low ground, which gave Paris all the space they needed to be able to get in for free. I think a little bit of nerves are starting to get to the Philadelphia Fusion when it came to those final moments. With about 40 seconds left, they gave up their positioning advantage yeah. and just allowed both of the tanks to get straight into the back. It's, uh, it's definitely chaotic, it's scrappy, but crazy moments as well like Nico building up that blizzard towards the end it's it's really fun to I, watch I was thinking back at this series so far and all of the pivotal plays that have kept Paris in this fight have realistically come from Fielder the, the sleep darts yeah, the, the bionades the kills yeah it's mental we might be seeing a reverse sweep in action but we're going to be finding out is it going to be possible can the Paris Eternal bring it back from the brink or will the Philadelphia Fusion shut it down don't go anywhere more gameplay coming up after the break Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Overwatch League. If you're just joining us, you have come at the right time. I'm going to be real with you yeah. guys. We're right in the middle of it. It's 2-2, two to two, <sighs> the Philadelphia Fusion versus the Paris Eternal. It's heating up a little bit. You know, it's getting there. It's a spicy it's game. A Picante, as they say, as, as you know, my good friend Golden Boy might say as well. This is potentially going to be another reverse sweep so far this week. I mean, how many more can we get? The Paris Eternal might be bringing it back from the brink against the Philadelphia Fusion. And we've seen this happen before. Normally, though, it's the, the Philadelphia Fusion who we associate with the team that ends up reverse sweeping the most teams. That's absolutely true. I mean, the Philadelphia Fusion actually did reverse sweep the Paris Eternal. Yeah. Uh, that was in week 10. Um, uh, week 5, the first time they met, that went to a game 5 as well, with Paris coming out on top. That was when we were playing more of the dive kind of stuff, which is a little more similar to what we're doing this week. Although, to be fair to them, the Philadelphia Fusion have, broadly speaking, just been playing the double shield anyway. They haven't played very much yeah. uh, Winston Diva. Uh, but this is... I mean, how did we ever think that it wasn't going to go to 5 for these <laughs> two teams? But I really did think that Philly had... Well, kind of moved ahead of the pack. Early on as well, it, it felt like the first two maps, it, it, certainly to me, from my perspective, uh, it felt like Paris Eternal had moved one way and, and Philly almost the other, you know? It's, yeah, uh, but agreed. But not the case. I mean, the, the thing with the Paris Eternal is I'm a huge fan of this team, mainly because of the coaching staff that's behind them. Um, of course, 9K, who is, is one of the coaches currently for the Paris Eternal, I don't know if he's a head coach or not, Josh. You'll have to correct me on that one. Um, uh, nine, 9K is actually the GM, which is oh, weird, really? but I think he also takes over some head coach kind of duties. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, maybe just be a labeling thing. But, I mean, who knows? Yeah, yeah. But, but 9K was a fantastic coach for the San Francisco Shock um, last year. So the fact that yeah. he's now there in, in position for Paris Eternal, very good. But as you can see from the map set, we are heading into Nepal. It's all going to end here. You can't draw on Nepal. You can't draw on the control maps. So we will be seeing a... Finalists concluded, or not finalists, so to speak, but you know what I mean. It's it's going to be concluded here. Yeah, and that's why Ivy comes back in, I think, because they are anticipating having to play the May. some May Reaper compositions. I think when it when it gets to honestly, it could be any of these maps. It's least likely to be on Shrine, but on on Sanctum and on Village, I could see people playing May Reaper, absolutely. Yep. Especially on Village. That's always been a very good May map, and I, I believe that's why Ivy's coming in here. But as we saw in map one, Ivy also pretty comfortable at being able to play the Echo. Paths Eternal have been heating up significantly, but I gotta say, I, I completely agree with you. I think the Fusion, despite the fact that they've just lost two maps in a row, they should have the advantage coming into this map. Paul very suited for Ivy's main. Ivy, one of the best mains that we have in the league currently. Now, the Fusion, looking like they're just uh, tweaking with their composition a little bit, seeing what they want to run out the gates. They still have a bit of time as the seconds break down. But I just want to reiterate to everybody at home how insane it would be if the Paris Eternal reverse swept this with Fielder playing when he was signed yeah. yesterday and Fielder is playing from Korea. Yeah, Fielder is playing with 200 ping right now, and he's hitting sleeps all over the place, punishing EQO when he was on the Echo. Uh, the the kills, the sleeps, the Bionades have all been insane from this guy today. The teams roll out, and the Fusion going to be going with the May Reaper competition. The Paris Eternal was something a little bit more loosey-goosey, a little bit more flexible, but flexible might not work entirely when Ivy hits the icicles like that. The headshot onto Fielder takes him out. And immediately you've lost your Ana, you've lost your damage output, or not your damage, but your healing output. You've lost a lot of your win conditions. Paris Eternal have to rethink how they want to approach this one now. I actually thought that we would be seeing the least May Reaper being played on this map, but Philly have just gone with it and they're deciding to play hyper aggro. Like they don't want to give any space to the Paris Eternal to set up their dives. I do like the aggressive style, but the Paris want to match them head to head. Seeing if they can try and clash into them. Hambin gets demeked in the process, which is never ideal. They've lost their D.Va out of the fight for just a moment. Now Hisu just rolling forward, but Sato stepping a little bit too far forward. The Shield Bash comes out he was, as well. He was actually caught inside the Winston bubble, so couldn't get any healing as well. Beautiful placement from Nosemite there. Clutching it up, but oh. I mean, at the end of the day, when Hisu gets an Anna boost loaded up onto him, the damage output is a little bit too much, though. He's falling very, very low. Has to get healed up by Alarm off onto the wayside. The Fusion still holding on to this point now. Funny Astro has to get the movement, has to get the jukes out. Has to pull out all the practice, you know, when he's been playing Jet Set Radio. Waiting for this game. You ever played that, Josh? Sure. Radio? No, no idea what you're talking about. Well, the game continues anyway. We're watching right here because 
past turn. We're trying to make some plays. His nose might oh. leapt into it, but he gets frozen up. Not able to find anything. Nico frozen in the blizzard as yeah, well. Nico switching over to the Reinhardt by using that duplicate. Laying down the Earth Shatter. Forces the two of them now, forcing out the Sound Barrier as well. And it gets the damage done with the laser beam in the tail end of it. Could be turnable now for the Pirates Eternal. They might be able to make something work out of this fight. I gotta say though, they're missing a lot of the players. Laser beam straight into the air. Nico, will he survive? Falling so, so low. He almost got peppered down, but wasn't quite enough. FD got with the whip shot, takes down Funny Astro as well. He's gonna be clobbering him from afar. Nico still just causing absolute chaos as he's flying above the enemy team. Sato, he just doesn't know where to place his shield. The poor, poor German 60-year-old old age pensioner, he doesn't know where to go. And Nico still just... <laughs> Nico, really what are you doing? sad when you put it like that. What is that? That was a hard feat. That was I mean, uh, terrible. That was... Yeah, that was that was a massive mistake that you cannot afford to make in a map five of a series like this. Well, they're still going to be trying to make some plays down. It's Sato lays down the earth shadow he completely negates the primal rage from those but those might still in it's still alive see what he can do with the fade away fire strike from sado will remove him from the fight nico though with the kill on tahisu still potentially winnable for them though but the blizzard does connect and ivy's going to be able to freeze up a couple of these members fusion is looking mighty good for them to try and take this fight the ice block forced out as the sticky bombs were laid onto him. Nico desperately trying to clutch this. He almost has his duplicate. He could try and turn this one with maybe a clutch little pick off. Knows my with another nano boost, laying it down. Nico falls oh. though, and the sound barrier on top. The Pirates Eternal are losing every single piece they've got at their disposal. It's so tough for them to try and keep this fight going for them, especially as Nico fell a little bit earlier in this fight. It means they're not gonna have the duplicate for the rest of this engagement. Unless they can stall it out a little bit longer, Nose Might does keep the overtime Diva. burning, and Nico has to switch over to the Diva just to try and stall this one out. Probably not the target he wanted. In the meantime, gets Demex, does manage to build up the self destruct, but he does not get too much out of it. Fury taking care of the rest, and it will be round number one going to the Philadelphia Fusion. Well, I think most of the viewers are going to think back to that horrific mistake coming out from Nico, where he dies when his team's in control of the point. I'm going to point back to that. I, I do think that Philadelphia just came out with a really good game plan there, though. The May Reaper works very effectively on that map. Uh, hadn't really seen it too much, honestly, in the May Reaper versus Echo matchup, but Philly made it work there. They, you know, the speed boosts were really hyper-focused. They were using their May walls to be able to get up in really good positions and put a lot of pressure on Paris. I, I do think that the Echo comp should have been able to stay in control of the point for much longer had Nico survived. And... Bye. That's that's one of those mistakes in clutch moments of a map five game like this that can definitely lose it for you. Yeah, and you got to think See now. See if Nico can clutch it out now. How are the Paris Eternal thinking moving into this map five? Because the round down Philadelphia Fusion might just be able to deny this reverse sweep. And if they're getting gifted free kills like that, I mean, why not just get the game over with already? Soon, out of position gets taken out as Fury just rolls him down with the boosters. And now the Pirates Eternal are really in a dangerous scenario. Caught off into these off angles, trying to defend away from them. Hampin falls. They're just able to pump in the aggression. Now the damage, the TP into the backline. He's just caught though. He needs that wall lowered. Finally, they do break through it. And uh, mistakes after mistakes, Josh. Yep. Horrible errors from the Paris DPS. And it only takes one for you to lose a map, honestly. Because now they're, they're not in control and they have to run a, a really difficult comp to retake. And I love the aggression from Fusion now. They're playing right into them. They They've do not the want echo. to get them any space. Nico's worked his way into the back line, but he's very low. Very, very low. He's on a sliver of health and he will go down to the Moira Orb, of all things. Always skillful. Yeah, always a brutal scenario when that happens. And the Paris Eternal, they have to use their own talent to field quite early. Fusion do not want to let them realistically regroup whatsoever. They're going to be using the sound barrier just to seal it in now. And they've won another team fight off the back of this one. The Paris Eternal are accruing ultimates, but the one thing they're not accruing that you need to win the map is control point percentage. Yeah, now at 50%, they have another Blizzard available as well, and that looks like it's going to be what Ivy goes for. They've got a Shatter and a Blizzard, which is a combo that's really good to try and work with. 
Paris. But the Paris are giving them the juice. Okay. They speed boosted in through the left. And the Ice Wall doesn't get anything. The Gravitic Flux is going to be committed. Blizzard comes down now to try and freeze them up. Nose might use the Fortify just to waddle out of it. And Nico's able to find a pick. The question is, though, will the Fusion able to find any pick offs with the ultimates that they've committed thus far? Ivy's desperately hunting Nobody around for Nico. Nico ends up having to duplicate the Reaper just to try and survive, but he gets frozen up and Moira orbed again. Taken out, but not before Paris are able to flip this point into their favor. But it might be too little too late as he's just going for a flank with that Death Blossom. They're trying to get a bit of damage done into the lower section right now of the pole. And Ivy with the freeze again, another headshot to Sue. Don't quite know what he's doing with that positioning there. And a Death Blossom on top. He Sue finds two picks. Make it a third. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. This the Paris Eternal have fallen to pieces, yeah. Bren. They managed to win a team fight there by initiating well, but they just can't find the kills that they need to be able to force Philly out. They just leave a May Reaper comp on the point, and then soon tries to take another off angle on his Ash and dies immediately because they have speed boost. They're going to definitely be able to get into you. Ash does not have the mobility of a Widowmaker where you can take those kind of aggressive angles. And now with 10 seconds left, yep. a speed boost, a sound barrier. Philly are trying to it's, close the door. It's over. I'm calling it now. The, the Paris Eternal have got absolutely nothing to work with. Only four seconds oh. left. Nico will be able to touch this one and force them back. But the Paris Eternal might be able to speed boost and try and get a pick off here. They get a boom off to Ivy. That could be critical. I may have just called it a little bit too early here. Ivy going down. They removed a lot of their damage now. And the fusion. They are really scattered all over the bloody shop now. The Gravitic Flux built up by Hanbin. Sends him up, sends him straight down. Again, Nosemite with the pin. Pandemonium on the point now. This might be the flip in their favor. Very clutch plays coming out from the Paris Eternal. Swinging away. Nosemite desperately trying to get this kill now onto Hisu. They find it. And have they found the opening they were looking for? As the fusion crumble and fall in the final moments. I cannot believe I just cast a curse of myself like that, Josh. <laughs> it really did seem over, and it totally would have been had Nico not found an opportunity to touch. Uh, FD God, I think the reaction. Boop. Yeah, and if FD God didn't get the boop. I mean, two fantastic plays from Nico and FD God to set them up there. And now, ults are starting to come back in their favor. They have the sound barrier to work with. Soon could try and set up for a death blossom. No smite with a shatter. They're not big ults, but they are clutchable. Definitely clutchable, especially if they can make some plays. FD God is hunting for another environmental kill opportunity soon in the back line. The Death Blossom unleashed, but look at that peel from Fury. He uses the defense matrix perfectly just to keep his team alive as the coalescence is going to be laid up and he soon tears through the opposition. So many kills flowing now for the Philadelphia Fusion and they are just seconds away now from taking this map. It was a good effort from the Paris Eternal, but good just quite isn't good enough. The Philadelphia Fusion taking that map number five. GG's in the chat, and they denied a reverse sweep away. Great work from Philly, staying strong in map five. Philly versus Paris has gone to map five now three <laughs> times. The score, two to one in favor of the Philadelphia Fusion. But Paris made them work for it today. They really did. Paris really made yep. them work for it. And I think they, they showcased that there is counterplay to the way that Philadelphia were playing with uh, the Echo and with the double shield. Uh, really great stuff. Uh, what a match. That was everything you could possibly want. And I wow. think this is one of my favorite metas that we've had to witness so far because teams are playing the Echo, so much clutch potential, such a fun hero to watch, but they're playing it with double shield. They're playing it with dive. They're sometimes not playing uh, the Echo at all. It's It's got a great variety and great tactical counterplay. Yeah, a big fan of it, actually. It's one of the... I think the best heroes that we've had introduced into the game in, in quite some time. So, well, actually, I really liked Wrecking Ball. Wrecking Ball coming in was fun. Yeah, you know? yeah, that was good. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Echo has, has really opened up the way these teams are playing this. And the Philadelphia Fusion, they deny the reverse sweep. Their territory is the reverse sweeps. It's a team that's known for it, realistically, quite famous for it in the Overwatch League. Uh, and they take it away from the Pass Eternal. The Pass Eternal so close to getting it done, but not quite yeah. enough for them. So, you know. Well played by the Fusion is all I've got to say. And it was so nice to see EQO come back as well um, onto the Echo. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think EQO was, even though the maps that he played weren't necessarily the maps the, where the Philadelphia Fusion ended up getting like dominant wins, although they definitely did on Nambani, I, I think he showcased that he has a really dominant Echo. He was manhandling Nico in the Echo 1v1s. Um, that was a powerful performance yeah. from him. And Ivy showcased great 
a flexibility between being able to play the Echo and being able to play the Mei. But I was mostly impressed by EQO here, coming straight off the bench and putting out great performances. Yeah, yeah, really, really solid performances all around. And uh, you know, Fielder though is another player that you've got to sure. got to give credit to because. When we finally see this guy play on low ping, i.e. any <laughs> ping that isn't 200, then we we can only hope for even better performances than what we just saw today. For a guy that just came into the Overwatch League, just signed to the Paris Eternal, playing on a ridiculous cross-world level of ping, that was a masterclass that he put forwards on Ana today. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I, I will say this, Overwatch's netcode, pretty good for playing on high ping it environments, is. but 200 ping is still 200 ping. And it's, yeah. it's hard to get stuff done. The picks he was getting off onto EQO at times. I mean, yeah. it's you don't really expect that from an Ana player when they're playing with that big of a disadvantage. But you got to give him a shout out. I think he would have been our player of the match had the Paris Eternal won. But alas, was not to be. The Philadelphia Fusion were the ones who stole it away in the, uh, in the final moments. The most important takeaway from this, though, Josh, has to be the fact that we still have not seen Chips to play. Um, a little bit disappointed in that sure. one, you know? Yeah, he said, I, I definitely thought he would be their Echo player. Didn't he say he was going to gift a million subs to XQC if... Uh, if yeah, if he, if, he if he didn't play. If he didn't play. Honestly, I, I've stopped believing anything that comes out of Chips' True. mouth. I, I, yeah. Having said that, I think there probably was at some point, you know, designs to play him. We have seen a couple of Doomfist metas rear their heads. People were playing a lot of Reaper Doomfist a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, but... Alas, it has not happened yet, but that's, I think, what happens when you are on the bench of a team that has a ridiculously stacked DPS line. So unlucky. I mean, the Philadelphia Fusion have just got so many great players. Yeah, just so unlucky all across the board. Very it? unlucky. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's nice to see that the Pirates Eternal aren't just, you know, falling to the wayside, at least, I will say, in terms of takeaways from that. Um, because we did have our worries um, that, you know, the Pirates Eternal might not have been that uh, good moving forward, at least, um, with XC yeah. moving over to Korea again. But, you know, they put up a fight. Now, I want to talk about our player of the match presented by Xfinity as well, because it's the one and only EQO. I think it's quite fair to say that this guy had a great performance on the Echo, really showing us how it was done. Uh, and again, reminding people that he does exist. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, EQO just came out of the bag and worked that Echo fantastically. He, he had a masterclass performance. I also want to give a shout out to Sado and Fury, who I yeah. thought played phenomenally well over the course of this match. Mostly playing the double shield compositions, but Fury was charging his ults at a ridiculous rate, and Sado and the rest of his team were so synced with those halts, and they kind of provided the distraction to make EQO look so good. He almost appeared uncontested at times, which is partly down to his team, but partly down to how he was able to manhandle the Echo v Echo for yep, absolutely. Couldn't agree more with that one. Now. In terms of, uh, of of what we're doing next or what's coming up soon, I believe we're going to get an interview. It's in the works. We're trying to get to that. But uh, yeah. looking forward as well, we do have a couple of more matches being played today, of course. The legendary, notorious Florida Boston. But I'm not going to talk about Florida Boston yep. because we got something slightly more important. We got Zoe down on the floor of an interview. Not quite a floor. It's actually, I think, her bedroom. It actually is my closet. Bren and half a hallway but uh yeah this is where i am funny astro didn't make it in time to join me but uh he is here with us as well so <laughs> thank you so much and of course congratulations on the w thank you okay so we ha we have to discuss this this is the third time you're facing off against the paris eternal and it's the third time it actually goes to map number five and the second time you are coming out on top of this. Based on scrims and preparations for this game, was this expected? Did you think it would be closer or did everything go out of the window after the second half? I think it was shouldn't have been as close as it was. Like the first two maps we definitely played how we were playing in scrims and the same as map five, but map three and four uh, just felt like we weren't playing our normal style, felt like we were a little lost. All right. Well, if you're saying a little lost, I mean, we did see changes coming in uh, in terms of who you're fielding from the roster in the second half. Um, what were these decisions based off? Were you just confident to just switch it up a little bit or was that a specific game plan coming into the second half? Uh, so this week we had EQO on Echo uh, because he's just exceptional at it. And we was, we've been swapping me and Boombox in and out because Boombox is uh, better at Baptiste and I'm more of a Lucio and Brig player. So that's the main reason we were just swapping Boombox in and EQO in for those maps where we plan to play Echo and Bap. 
And those were just our planned compositions. Okay, that's fair. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> if you're looking at the uh, compositions uh, which you faced off against, is this kind of what you expected the Paris to uh, roll out the gates with? Or was anything really taking you by surprise? Uh, I don't think we really expected to see much dive from Paris. I thought, uh, especially with Rhine comps being able to be played, I thought they were going to play a lot more Rhine comps and maybe a little more Orissa, which definitely threw us off. Something on map three, we just weren't expecting them to play dive. Maybe it was just because they got destroyed so hard on the first two maps, they just had to say, let's just go dive, we have no other option. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, adjustments needed to be made, and they did work out for them. Uh, if we're speaking of adjustments, you're one of the teams which we praise time and time again for adaptations and adjustments uh, which are being made, not just you know from one match to another match, but within the match from one map to another, or even within the map. So there's a lot of quick turnarounds. Is there any particular players which are kind of you know taking the charge when it comes to changes being made in game? I think. People just generally pick whatever they want on our team. <laughs> like, if you feel like your character isn't working, just pick something else. Why not? No one's gonna blame you. Okay, for so there's a lot of new. autonomy on the player to just make kind of decisions. <laughs> yeah, a lot of our swaps. I mean, some of them are planned, and then some of them are just people feeling like if a certain hero isn't working, there's no point trying to force it. So no. you may as well just change. It might as well, yeah. I mean, if, if the player isn't feeling comfortable with what they're playing right now, then uh, that is probably the best thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, you have a team with uh, incredible depth. There's a lot of really, really high class players. Um, who's making the decisions who to field coming into it? I think that's just up to our coaches. Uh, at the start of the week, we play with every single player on our roster. And then we sort of try and figure out what the meta is and then see which players are best of those heroes. So, like I said, for this week, we found Echo was pretty good. So we subbed in EQO, and then we found BAP was really good. So we played Boombox for some maps. And it's really a map-specific thing of just whatever we feel like is best on certain maps, we'll play the roster which suits those characters best. Do you also do specific uh, prep for teams, or do you feel like with the ever-changing roster and with the lack of scrims against some of the teams, that's not really possible, so you're more focused on the maps? Uh, it's pretty hard to prep for teams because you generally have no idea what they're going <laughs> to play before a match because of the hero band system. It's impossible to predict. Like We had no clue they were going to even know how to play Winston comps. We were just expecting Ryan and Marissa, like I said. So that was one thing I think our prep fell short on, but yeah. But in terms of the prep, uh, do you feel like your team is having a good grip on it uh, with short turnarounds to prepare for a different meta? Do you, do you think there is any composition which could like actually break your game? Because right now you look to be able to execute pretty much everything. I think I can't think of a single like set of heroes that our team doesn't cover. We've just got such good depth and especially like we've got certain players which we could sub in for certain heroes and know people are dying to see chips to play <laughs> so uh, we just have to hope for a doom meta so we can put him in all uh, right i take that as a promise by the <laughs> way we all expected him to play echo but all right uh doomfist it is you heard it here first that's completely on you funny astro <laughs> <laughs> well uh that's it already from us thank you so much for shedding some light and giving us some insight and congratulations once again thank you and uh, we are now heading into a very quick break and afterwards we are back with the florida mayhem which will be facing off against the boston uprising